Today we're going to be talking about the different periodic trends that we see on our periodic table. This is going to be a table and uh, we have four columns here and we're going to go through each of the rows. So the first row we have is going to be that that belongs to atomic radius. So atomic radius literally just means exactly what you think it means. It's going to be the radius of an atom. A reminder that the radius means that we're measuring from the center of that sphere to the outermost edge of our electron cloud. So we're measuring from the center of our nucleus to that edge of our electron cloud. Now when we talk about atomic radiuses, we need to know what our actual trend is going to be. So we have this diagram of a uh, rectangle which is going to stand in for a periodic table. And we have our arrows where the heads are going toward where we are going to have the increasing trend. So in the top rightmost corner, we have the very smallest atoms. These are going to be our helium atoms. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our largest atoms, which are going to be uh, my francium atoms, okay? So as we go from left to right, we get smaller. And as we go from top to bottom, we get larger. Now that seems strange because as we're going from left to right, we are increasing the number of protons. And so logic follows that if we increase the mass of our atoms, then they should also get larger. This is not how it works, however, because we are not just dealing with things that do not have a charge. From left to right, we are increasing our number of protons. But that means that we are also increasing the number of positive charges that we have to pull those electrons in. And remember that in the same row, we are dealing with the same energy level, which means that those electrons are going to be filling up that same orbit. And it's easier as I go from left to right for those positive charges to overwhelm the radius of the orbit and pull it in smaller. So since I have more protons to pull the electrons in closer, then I get smaller as I go from left to right. Now top to bottom, since I am going to be adding extra energy levels, this makes it more difficult, so we start the trend over again. We're going to be larger because we have more electrons to handle in a different orbit. So the next trend that we're going to be talking about is going to be that of ionization energy. So we already know the root word here, ion, and we're familiar with the word energy. So ionization energy is going to be the energy required to move, to remove an electron from an atom. So we have again that same diagram, but you'll notice that the arrows are in different directions this time. So we still have the head of the arrow, meaning that the uh, trend is going to be increasing here. But you'll notice that it is the exact opposite trend as atomic radius. For ionization energy, my highest ionization energy is going to be my smallest atom. And my lowest ionization energy is going to be my largest atom. The reason for that is exactly the reason that I just stated. So ionization energy increases as I move from left to right, as I get smaller, because my electrons are closer to the nucleus, which makes it more difficult to take them away. If they're very far away from you, then it's really easy to steal. But if it's something that's very, very close to you, it's much, much more difficult to steal. And that's what we're seeing with ionization energy. So left to right, my atoms are getting smaller, which makes those electrons easier to watch, which makes them harder to steal. Top to bottom, my ionization energy is going to be decreasing because my atoms are getting larger, which makes it easier and easier to steal an electron because I am 
able to control them less and less as I get farther and farther from the nucleus. Now my next trend is going to be that of electronegativity. Electronegativity is going to be the one that has the name that makes the least amount of sense just first off by looking at it. Can't quite guess as to what it's going to mean. But electronegativity is the measure of the ability for an atom to attract somebody else's electrons. Okay, this is my drive and my ability to maintain somebody else's electrons after I have attracted them. So, you'll notice that my trend is the exact same as my ionization energy trend. If it's hard for you to steal from an atom, it will be easier for that atom to maintain anything else that it gains. You can think of ionization energy as responsibility of the atom. My very small atoms have everything in order. They are very tight and concise, and they are ahead and in charge of their lives. They have a lot of responsibility, and they are ready to go. Whereas my very large atoms, their stuff is spread out everywhere. And so you can think of electronegativity as kind of like the trustworthiness of that atom. So if you were going to give your friend your phone or another item that you value, would you give it to your friend that has all their stuff in order? They know where everything that they own is? Or would you give it to the friend that doesn't even know where their stuff is? They lose stuff all the time. You're probably going to be giving your phone or something that you value to someone that you trust with their own stuff. Because if they can be trusted with their stuff, most likely they can be trusted with yours. So we're gonna see those trends from left to right, same as with ionization energy. Electronegativity increases as my electrons are closer to the nucleus because they are better able to be contained, which makes it easier for me to take care of an extra item, an extra electron. So same from top to bottom, again, same reasoning. If I have a small atom, it is easier for me to maintain, which means that as I grow from top to bottom, it makes it harder and harder for me to watch out for your specific electrons that you just handed me. So we have two trends left. We first have the trend of our cat ion. Remember that our cat ion are going to be our positive ions, and we are worried about the radius of a cat ion. So remember that cat ions are positively charged and this is going to happen when I have less uh, electrons than I have protons. And you can think of this kind of like as you lose weight. So if I lost an electron, if I lost a pound, am I larger or smaller? Well, I am going to be smaller than my original atom. I lost an electron, which makes it easier for those protons in the center to pull in the remaining electrons. And so my radius is going to decrease. Lastly, we have the trend for my anion. My anion, remember, is going to be the opposite of my cation. It is going to be negatively charged. It's negatively charged because I gained one or more electrons. So again, think of it kind of like weight. If I gained, or, uh, if I gained one or two pounds, am I bigger or smaller? I'm going to be bigger because now I have more electrons to take care of, then I have protons to, to take care of those electrons. Since I have more electrons, my electron cloud grows. And so compared to my initial neutral atom, I am going to be larger.